Yo, what up, what up? It's your boy Vinny Dangerous, and to celebrate the release of the video for my song, I Love You So Much, I decided to peel back the curtain and let y'all know how this was made. So let's get it. Never have I done this before. Never... All right, so really and truthfully, when I made this song, or made this beat, I did not have a song in mind at all. Like, mo that's kind of my process most of the time, is that I like to make the beat first and then i'll write the lyrics to it afterwards like honestly when i made this particular track i didn't even think i was gonna rap over it at first i made it like in january of 2023 and honestly my idea behind it was as simple as just saying hey i want to make a track with no with no drums just randomly i just wanted to see if i could make it and make it interesting enough so it was kind of like a little challenge to myself and also just me wanting to make something that I could hear in like, you know, ambient music. That's like the, in the background of, you know, YouTube videos or maybe even like therapy ads or, you know, just stuff like that. I want to get into the sync licensing game. And that was kind of my like my vision originally for a track like this. And then it just ended up morphing into a track like I dedicated to my son. Like I decided to start right into it because my son likes to watch um, stuff like Hey Bear Sensory or Hey Sensory Bear on YouTube. And, you know, it's stuff that, you know, just helps him calm down a little bit. And I like listening to ambient music and just like, you know, chill instrumental lo-fi music whenever I need just like to chill out a little bit. So I kind of had that kind of in mind. Like I wanted it to be a song where he could listen to it the same way he listens to, you know, those YouTube kids channels and, you know, kind of have that as like a, like a time cap capsule and a memory for him moving forward. If I sound a little funny, I, I decided to start uh, wearing Invisalign to kind of help straighten out my teeth a little bit. So I'm still getting used to them. So if I if I sound like I got a little bit of a list, I got I got plastic on my teeth. But all right, let's get into like the the nitty gritty of this track. Full disclosure, I'm not a music expert when it comes to like music theory and stuff like that or mixing or anything. Like I've taken a little bit of classes here and there, and I've watched like hella YouTube tutorials. But I'm by no means an expert, so you know I just kind of do whatever feels right to me at the time. And this is a track I made like a while ago. Like I'm even better. And I've, I went back through this session. And I was like, man, that was so much stuff. I could have did a lot better. But, you know, I, I like to leave stuff as is. And just, oh, this this is something I would have done better here. And then I just take that knowledge into the next tracks moving forward. I don't like going back on tweaking stuff that I've already done. So just full disclosure, it's not a tutorial. I'm not an expert. Maybe you'll learn something. You know, or you'll just look at me and be like, wow, man, this guy has absolutely no idea what he's doing. I'm just doing whatever feels right to me. And like, it, it works. It works for me. So I started off with this. I'm always a big guy that like focuses on chords. Like I don't really do drums first unless I switch it up. But I love chords. I love pads. I love, you know, starting off with like a chord progression and just building on that. So I started with this. This is like the main patch you hear. You know, something like soothing, simple like that. Um, I use this plugin called Surge. Anybody that knows me, like when I talk about music and stuff, I'm a big like champion for people to use free stuff, free plugins, freeware. Not pirated, not cracked, but like free stuff. Because there's a lot of high quality stuff out here, and there's a lot of people that look at tutorials. I think they need to buy the six hundred dollar plugin. They need to buy the thousand dollar plugin bundle or whatever. Like, yo, if you just starting out, like I have, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I was decent. I make a decent living with my day job, but like, I didn't have money to just throw at like the most expensive stuff. And I'm really just getting back into this thing for real. And there's a lot of like high quality free stuff out there that could really work i think the only paid plugin i got on this track is nexus and that's something that i bought like a while ago like back when i was in high school i got this 
and I just kept it because it it cost me at least a hundred dollars if I'm if I remember correctly, and I'm like I'm not I'm not letting that one go, for the most part I think everything else I use is free, so it's this preset called Robo Choir Two, and yeah I didn't I don't do a lot of like instrument mixing. Most of my mixing comes from like the buses here. So I got a bus for the melody, bus for the drums, and then they're both routed to a mix bus. So most of the time it's just kind of like use this like vintage EQ. I use this large mid side preset for large pad preset. A um, little bit of EQ to filter it out. It's fucking shit. No way. And a little bit of uh, a Fairchild to like squeeze it and make it sound good. I, I like I like using a lot of vintage stuff too, just because it gives me that kind of feel. I don't know. It just it feels warm. It feels uh, wholesome, and that's kind of the vibe I wanted to go for with this track. So that was that, and then I layered it with this retro keys, also free, really dope plugin. And that has a lot of dope features to it. Uh, so, and I just copied that same chord progression and I, I copied it over here. This is actually my favorite part of the whole track. So, you know, just something simple. Uh, same thing. Just, uh, just EQ. I keep a little bit of bass in the piano. Uh, since I'm not, there's, there's no kick. Uh, you know, there's a lot of percussion, but there's no kick. Uh, I decided to keep the bass in the piano kind of help fill it out a little bit and use the fair child again uh yo t-rex t-rex is like my favorite stuff this uh, like almost every session i do i have something with theirs on here so from there i just the dude i mean i i hate though i hate that i said no drums like realistically there are drums in this it's just not you know traditional like kick and snare like I use a lot of like percussion stuff, but nothing, you know, I try to keep it as light and airy as possible. So these are like all the drum elements to it. Of course that bass line, the Nexus. Yeah, you know, something like that. Like I said, I do a lot of like, you know, everything else is just like filtering, a little bit of the delay on a lot of stuff to just keep, give it that feel of like spaciness and stuff. Um, you know, a little bit of EQ, uh compression it's a little bit of distortion you know like i said I, I like using free freeware free stuff wherever i can i also like using stock stuff like i always tell people learn your d learn your dog there's still a lot of stuff that i need to learn on mine to be fair but you know learning how to use this stuff for your um for your production and then moving on to you know the other more expensive stuff and stuff like that I always, always suggest people do that. Like, if anybody ever asks me for anything, right? So, yeah, like, that's, you know, just using stuff like that, just trying to make it sound as, like, airy and spacious, but also give it that rhythm, too. Like, so I just want to, but without, like, the traditional, like, kick as, like, the driving force. And then I came up with this um, counter melody. That's always been my Achilles heel, I guess. It was mixing at one point, but I really like I got I got a better handle on mixing. It was something that really like frustrated me. Um, but outside of mixing, um, my Achilles heel when it comes to production is like counter melodies, like coming up with something like because I, I you know you see I do the simple chord progression, simple uh, you know layering, you know my percu my percussion drums and stuff usually just whatever like feels right and i just kind of either click it in or play it in i was clicking a lot of stuff in around this time i'm playing a lot more now but a counter melody finding that element that like helps just finish off everything and really give it like that bounce and you know that melody and like the memorability of the song like that that's always been like the part where I struggle with a lot. So this is what I came up with at the time. Yeah, that one, that one I felt like, I, I, I can't remember exactly, but I felt like I was in my zone with that one. So I did, I don't, I don't know. Don't ask me, I don't know. I did, I was, I was doing some like weird stuff with the EQ then, um, you know, used in this Valhalla Supermassive, kind of give it some delay and reverb 
uh, a little bit more delay like making it a little bit wider and kind of help give it that space to kind of help it stand out from from the the main pad sound for the chord progression and then another like a panning effect to kind of help like sway it from the left ear to the right ear like to just kind of give it that swirling you know everything about this was just like let's make it as dreamy as possible now i'm not a big guy that uses loops like i guess this would be like the last thing that i added to the track i'm not a real big loop guy uh I, I like to if anything if i use a loop i like to sample i like to like you know use it and in in like as a sample and to just manipulate it and do my own thing with it but with this uh particular one i just like the way it was i think the only thing i had to do was like time stretch it a little bit because you see it's like 88 bpm and uh the track is 91 so i had to like time stretch it to make it fit but for the most part like it just kind of fit and gave it that little bit of a change up I, I try not to do too much with my tracks but i just you know because it was so stripped back that i felt like i needed a little little change up here and it's like the only part of the track that has this percussion loop and of course i had to put my own little effects on it yo and that's that's basically the full track right there um not a lot like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten, ten tracks in total uh created this each element got the got its own track too just because i want to uh pull stuff out put stuff back in just depending on what the song needs uh, I, I realized because I was doing a lot of moving stuff around, I, I did have the samples of my son saying mama and dada, like when he was first starting to speak, like his first few words. And that was on here and mixed in to the instrumental itself. So it wasn't in the uh, recording session when I, when me and Jones uh, vocals were put down, but like, you know, I, I moved it. I was trying to consolidate some stuff, ended up moving it from where it originally was. So it's basically like I can't find it. And I literally just turned on the computer, looked for it a little bit, but didn't didn't really like deep dive into where it's at. I'm pretty sure it's on like some on my hard drive somewhere. Actually, I know it is, but I just couldn't find it before, you know, I was ready to record this. So, yeah, this is the full track. I guess I'll just start from the hook. Um, but yeah, make sure you check out the video for I Love You So Much out right now on www.vinnydangerous.com. It's on YouTube too. If you're watching this on YouTube, so you can just check it out on my channel. If you don't want to go to the website, I would appreciate it if you go to the website. Um, this hoodie right here, just put this out for the album. Got the track list on the back and everything. You can cop one of those from the website. Also, have a T-shirt. It's you know a little bit more budget friendly if you don't want to cop the hoodie. But it's hoodie season, and you know I'm I'm, I'm here to hook you up and make sure you listen to Dream Till It's Over, the album where this song comes from. Plus, the whole album is inspired by me becoming a father. So it was only that like only right that I decided to do this song in particular and make a video for it. Because, you know, it just kind of like it's like it's the sun in like the orbit of like what this album is about and the nucleus, which is like, you know, how much being a father means to me and just like how it's changed me for the better. So make sure y'all check that out. You can listen to it on Bandcamp. You can buy it from Bandcamp or www.vindedangerous.com. Also got CDs. You know, just like this, you know, that you can cop and I'll ship it to you personally. But, hey, I'm going to let the track play and let it fade out. Let me know if y'all want to see more breakdowns like this. You know, let me know in the comments because there's something I've, I've always thought about doing. I just, you know, didn't really know how to approach it. But I just decided to just say fuck it and just go ahead and turn on the camera and talk about it. And, you know, if y'all want to see more stuff like this, let me know. But without further ado, here's the track. Peace. Never have I.